What's going on everyone? Today we are going to be doing a burst fade. Um, this client here likes his burst fade to look in between a burst fade and a mohawk. You also see his hair is super high so we're going to take some of that length down. We're also going to clean up the sides. He doesn't want it to be super boxy but we are going to give it a little bit of shape. Um, in this film here, I'm just going to pretty much be showing you guys one side only. Um, the same steps are for the other side, so I didn't feel it necessary. Right here, we're just going to go ahead and comb the hair down. Get everything laid down and smoothed out so that we can get a better idea of how we want this to look. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to knock down some of this bulk. What I have on my Oster Fast Feeds is a Andis 2 guard. That is a double magnet guard by the way. Um, I've never really used a single guard so I don't really know too much about them. But the Andis 2 guard double magnet is what I'm using right now just to get rid of a lot of that bulk so that I'm able to visualize how I want this burst fade to look, how I want the outcome to look. This is what works best for me. If you can go in there and you can start making your guidelines and stuff with a bunch of hair, do what works best for you. This is what I found for myself, so this is what I like to stick to. Here is the Andes Slimline Pro, and I am making my first guideline that is a bald guideline. Um, with burst fades, you want your guidelines to be like little circles or little half circles, excuse me, um, because if you have it as a straight line, then the fade's just gonna pretty much be straight up like a little box. But if you do it as a half circle, then the fade is gonna burst out, hence the name burst fade. So make sure your guidelines are all half circles. Um, right now I'm lining the back up. This is just going to help me, um, kind of help me establish how dark I want the back to be and how far back I want my guidelines to go. So some people save the lineup for last. I like to do it first thing so that I'm able to, to get a better idea of how this is going to turn out. Just another note too, the half circle doesn't have to be super perfect. The reason being is these guidelines get blended out. You want them to be neat. You want them to, to match. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Right now I'm putting in my second guideline, which is my Oster Fast Feeds all the way open, no guard, and I'm going up about a half an inch. I'm following the same shape that I made with my bald guideline, and I'm making sure that everything matches. Um, as you can see, it's not a perfect circle, but they do match each other. Now right here, I have a one guard on my Oster Fast Feeds and I have it all the way open. Because I used a two guard to clean up the bulk, this one guard open should just blend right into that two guard. I shouldn't have any issues. Um, and I'm gonna follow the same shape as the other two guidelines that I made. Um, this one is a little bigger than, than the um, clipper all the way open. This, this guideline is about an inch, I wanna say. And um, I'm keeping the same shape, not going too far into the back. 
Also, if you guys take a look at what I'm doing with my thumb, I'm opening and I'm closing that lever. I'm gonna fast forward through this part, but I'm opening and I'm closing that lever and I'm knocking out that line between the one guard open and the no guard all the way open. Now I'm coming in with a zero guard all the way open right now. And I'm just cleaning up a lot of the dark spots that that one guard leaves behind. I am starting to play with the lever two, opening and closing it. And I'm gonna go right onto that line or that guideline that I made between the no guard open and the one guard open. And I'm gonna clean that up with the zero guard. I know that's a lot and I hope I didn't confuse you guys, but this zero guard is cleaning up those the, that line and those dark spots that that one guard open left behind. Learn to play with your lever too. Um, learn to open and close it. Adjust it if need be. That way it, it opens and closes smoothly and you're not hurting your thumb trying to open and close it because it's so stiff. Now I'm coming in with my same clipper, my Oster Fast Feet, and I have no guard on there. I am opening and I'm closing the lever to clean up a lot of the dark spots and to knock out that final line at the bottom. Also, if you look, I'm only using the corners of my blade. Um, this is how you're gonna get a fade that just looks really smooth, the transition looks good, the contrast looks good. You have to learn to use your, color, your, your corners because if you use the whole blade, all you're gonna do is make another guideline. So I'm just using the corners, I'm using like those three or four teeth at the end and really just smoothing this blend out. So right here, I'm just cleaning up um, a little more of the hair that's hanging over on the back side. I'm also lining up the back again, going over it just to clean up the baby hairs around um, the nape area. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna line his hook. I'm using my Andis T outliners. That is a GTX blade on there and that blade is modified. Um, so the thing with lining people up is practice. I can't really tell you guys how to do it. Um, I've still been, you know, learning a lot of things, trial and error, trying different clippers, different blades to, to really see what works best for me. These clippers actually work really well for me. Um, the top is cut off, which makes it a lot easier to see the line when I am lining it. But trial and error practice, you may push some people back, you may have crooked lines, but just practice makes perfect. Um, so that's really the only advice I could give to you guys on a lineup. I'm still learning myself. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead, pick his hair out. He picked it out quite a bit before he came in, but I'm just gonna try to get a little bit more of the curls out. We're not gonna take his hair down too low um, because he does curl it back up after a shower. He just wears it pretty natural. So when he does that, it takes down a lot of the length. So we're not gonna get rid of too much of it. Now I'm coming in with my wall magic clips and I'm shaping his hair. I'm starting on the sides first, I'm going straight up freehand. 
I don't want it to be super boxy, but I don't want it to just hang over the fade. I want to want that to be visible. Um, so when you're freehand trimming, just make sure you're very careful and you have a steady hand. Same thing on the other side, just freehand trimming it. Um, use your mirrors also just to make sure that everything is is even uh, Whenever somebody is going to curl their hair back up You don't want it to be uneven, but it doesn't need to be super perfect like they're gonna wear a flat top or an afro um, But you don't you also don't want it to be a gumby so just make sure everything is as even as possible <laughs> So right here, I'm just lining the back, we're just rounding it out, making sure it's even and clean. So right now I'm going to prepare the client for a lineup. Um, I'm putting in some Diane Duckbill clips. He actually has a pretty good line, natural line, pretty boxy. So we're going to clean up um, pretty much a lot of the baby hairs, even it out a little bit. Um, if you look at his hairline too, he has very, um, his temples are very round. So it, from the front view, it makes his hair line look super round. But if you take a look when I turn them to the sides, everything's straight and everything's pretty boxy. But because of the way his temples round out, it kind of makes the hairline look like it's blown out, which is kind of weird. But that's also another thing. Everybody has different types of hair textures. Everybody has different type of hairline. So you got to do the best you can without pushing them back, without making it look unnatural. Um, so right here, I'm going to start the lineup, start in the middle and just work myself, work my way um, on each side, trying to make it as straight as possible. Finishing him up with, um, or finishing his hairline up with a straight razor. These are Dorco Prime blades, and the blade holder that I'm using is the Tum 45, which is actually super dope. Um, I like the weight of it. It came with the shave gel when I ordered it. 
um, really like it so I highly recommend it um, get you one it's worth it it's pretty durable too so pretty much here you're able to see the shape um, you're also able to see the blend on this first fade I'm going ahead and I'm watering it down because he does want me to use the, the twist sponge on it or the curl sponge. Um, this isn't like the actual twist sponge, curl sponge, whatever you guys want to call it. I got this one on Amazon um, and it works, it works really well. I like it a lot. It's also small and it's also pretty affordable. Um, but right now I'm just putting some shea butter in his hair. And I'm just uh, trying to crunch it up with my hands to get the curl definition back into it. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the twist sponge on this. So this is the finished product. Unfortunately, because I was in a rush and I had another client waiting, I forgot to do the whole zoom in, zoom out, different angles. But this cut was dope. I had to, to post it. If you have any feedback, any comments, any questions, please leave them below. Stay tuned because I have really big things coming. Um, not, too, not so much tutorials, but other big things coming, so stay tuned. Keep an eye out for it. I'll be back soon. I'm out.